Do you own a set of weights? Do you? A lot of you are shaking your head, yes. Every Tuesday and Thursday even. Wow, some of you are even using it. Praise God. (laughs) Praise God. Turns out, I own a set too. Had forgotten about that. And in my mind's eye, when I saw the set I own, has a bench with a nice cushion on it, and has a stack of weights to the side. In my mind's eye, when I saw it, I said, oh, yeah. I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't you want to just handle the world? Something about seeing a weight set makes you want to say, I can do it. And at the same time that your mind's eye imagines imagines such great things upon yourself, once you bow down to pick it up, and you begin with the lighter one, and your arm begins to shake on the way up, and your eyes cross just a little bit, but you can't tell. You can't see yourself. Father, help. Father, help. How has your week been? Rough. There's some rough, there's some good, all mixed in. Isn't that the average week? Amen? This is why we need to gather, especially for Easter weekend, especially to talk about what God has done. For when I not only look at my weight set, but I look at aspects of my life, I have in my mind's eye this image of what I want to accomplish or how I want to handle such things. On how I want to, no matter how hard, no matter how heavy the burden, I want to be, in the name of Jesus, in charge, on top, in control, up underneath, well-balanced, strong. I want to be that. Jesus said once upon a time, I knelt down into my glorious world that I had exploded up out of from nothing into magnificence that has power and gravity and movement and order. I knelt down and I created mankind and I intended you. So you sit here today with the magnificent intention of God. You do. And you are magnificent. I look at all of you up here, the choir singing and the testimonies coming, and I see people passionate saying, I don't care what burden has been thrown my way this day, this year. I want to be up underneath. I want to be up on top of in the name of Jesus. And God created the earth, and he created mankind, and he looked down today, and he said, "Mm, it is good. We can do this, life eternal. Let's live life eternal together, mankind, you and me. Let's live forever in this magnificent universe, making the best of it, making the most of it, managing it well, caring for it, tending to it, enjoying the blessing of it forever. Let's do this, this thing called life, abundant. Let's enjoy love, and let's enjoy not minimal, let's enjoy maximum. Let's enjoy space that never ends. Let's enjoy time that does not stop. Let's enjoy diversity that is overflowing. Let's enjoy love to its fullest. Let's do this. And God looked down at the beginning of the story and said, it is good up underneath the weight of it all. Together with him, we were. And then, like every good weight trainer, he stopped. And with his new trainees, muscles all bulging. That was a hard work week, I just have to say. There's a lot of creating going on. He rested with his creation. For every bodybuilder, every every weight trainer knows, if you don't pause to rest, this isn't going to work. 
you got to pause, you got to rest, you got to take a break, you got to let the muscles rebuild in order to take on the next day. So that's what they did. They rested. And they rested on that day, and God said, I'm going to make this day of rest a memorial. A memorial of time. So that everybody can come. No limited seating here. Everybody's in. A memorial. And then, more than that, I'm going to make it a sign. Like if you are in the weight training Olympics, and you are branded, psh, I'm going to make this day of rest our sign. God says, you, me. I'm yours, you're mine. And we can do this. In the name of Jesus. So that's the sign. A day of rest, a day of celebration. How cool is your God? Like, don't you want a break? Don't you want a holiday every week? Why celebrate your birthday once a year? Let's just do it every week. God is a God of celebration, and let's rest in it. Let's make it fun. But something happened, and we thought we could do it all by ourselves. And we got out there. And somehow we've come to church here today, even, I know, and as much as the possibility still exists, as much as the story of life has hit you, you have come with burdens greater that have knocked you to your feet. You have come with experiences that have changed everything for your tomorrow. And, and have you not been darkened by some of these things. As much as you believe, as much as you hope, this world is hard living. Amen. It's hard living. Even if it looks good and shiny on the outside, our storyteller, have you had a dark moment this week, this year, where you said, I can't even pick up the phone. I don't even want to go to work today. And the smallest things in life that are the, are the one-pound waiters, the one-pound waiters, you couldn't even lift today. The little things you don't want to do it, you can't step forward, but you're going to put the smile on and go outside anyway. Father, help! We need a resurrection sermon, family of God, Amen. regularly. Yes. Because not only did God set up the whole picture from the beginning when it was good and rested, but he knows this of you, his dear precious creation that if you've come to church today knowing something's been hard and I can't lift the one pound weight and this is what I look like underneath this smile and this pretty dress I have on God says I know how to recreate you I know how to start all over if I did it the first time guess what your God can do it again. And it's even more magnificent the second time, believe it or not. All the scar tissue, all the strength building, we're going to look even tougher on the other side. You know, Jesus even kept the stars, scars in his hands for eternity for you and I. We're going to be tougher, stronger, with more magnificent weight on our shoulders in resurrection strength. So God says, Let's get to some weight training. Let's get to some weight training. But do not forget the sign, for it's always a contrast. What God creates is always a contrast. What you think is weight training is not weight training. He knows weight training. He said, let's go back to the sign. Don't forget who's sponsoring you in your weight training. Don't forget the source of your power. For that's how you're going to lift the weight tomorrow. Because in your own power, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Try to take 
try to take all your effort up underneath that one pounder today with the evil that has pounded up on top of you of your own making. Just try it. Just try it. And the world will bring you to your knees. So don't forget the sign. Exodus 31 reminds us way back there, say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbath. You must observe my rest. You need my rest. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come. This is personal with God. Isn't it cool that he gives us a sign? That he gives a personal mark with you? This is my wedding ring with you. This is my declaration with you. This is my signed document with you. I am yours, you are mine. I, and this is how you'll know, take this sign on. Let it be your sign this day of rest so that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Do you wonder where he is? Take on the sign and don't forget. Put it back on your finger. Enter into this space today and know that God wants you to know he established this space and time for you to enter here today and you have to tell you that I am your God. Ooh, that's nice. He is standing right up behind you today. I'm yours. That mighty God, he says, and here, more to that, I am the God who makes you holy. Amen. I don't stand here up idle on the side just deserving your misery down there below, laughing like a little movie screen at you with your little weight training and mess ups down there. I am your God, I'm standing up behind you, and I'm going to make you holy. Amen. Take that word holy, I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to repair the damaged parts. I'm going to fix your weak and atrophying muscles. Someone help that weak and atrophying muscle that didn't look at the weight set for quite some time, who's been checking out on God and wondering where his power is, and you're up underneath the weight again. God says, I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to make you strong. I'm going to fix this thing. I am your God. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites. How long? When he sets a sign, he's serious about it. He doesn't go back on his promises. He doesn't undo it. He doesn't make up a new one that's better. This is the good thing that was good the first time. And it's going to be the good thing that carries you through the middle. And it's going to be the good thing we rejoice of for all eternity to come. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Do you want to be refreshed? You need some refreshing. That's called resurrection when you start taking the drink of it all. The Ten Commandments are listed twice in your Bible, two times. The first time and the second time, they are listed identical. There's nothing different about them except one little thing. One little thing. And it has to do with the sign. One, two, and three are the same. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are the same. Number four is the same. But number four goes deeper. Number four is the sign. The sign is the first one that says, remember, I created you. I gave you life. Let's rest in this life I gave you. Enjoy. But you messed it up. I'm going to recreate you again. So this time when you rest in me, the Bible says, six days shall you work and do all your labor. Seventh day, rest. He said, but this time do it because I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And I have redeemed you from the slavery of sin. I have resurrected the slaves up out of sin. And they did nothing to create that for themselves. I did it. I recreated you again. This is my sign that remains for you again. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about the cross and the burden that Jesus carried, 
the weights that he endured. I imagine every single one of my sins alone looking like one of these boulders. Every single one of my sins creates an escalade of weighted pain on the world. Every one little thought cascades into an effect that changes the whole world. It affects my family, it affects my children, it affects my church. Every incapacity that I have, every intentional uh, neglect I do, it hurts people. And each one of those things I don't even know the magnitude of creates like a boulder effect on the world, like a weight. And I've done it more than once. So when I think about what my Lord had to do to carry my burden, to clean me up and resurrect me, I imagine a pile, and imagine that's like really big on the screen. That's just mine on the back of my Lord. And he says, I take it, Jennifer, because I love you, and I'm going to recreate you. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take the burden that you can't lift. Give me that one pounder and give me the, the thousand pounders that you can't even see. I've got this. I'm going to take it all. And then imagine it's not just Pastor Jennifer's, but it's yours. All in this room. How big is that load? And then imagine how big the weight of the sin of the entire generation that lives today. How big is the weight of the burden of evil and sin? Imagine the worst story you've ever heard and know that it's happened a multitude of times on the globe on innocent children. Imagine the poverty. Imagine the worst case stories that you're going through that has happened to millions of people across the globe. How big is the weight of our sinfulness upon the Lord? And how big should that penalty be? When I think of my Lord, I'm thinking, oh, Lord God, he must be in that grave for a million years for the weight of our sins, the penalty, the penalty. Jesus says, I, I'm going to take this, not my will, but your will be done, not in my own power, but in your strength. The angel comes down and gives him the cup, and he, together, even the angel alongside Jesus, he helps him drink the cup of all of the weight of our sins, and he bears it all, and, and the weight of it crushes him. It crushes the life out of him, the breath out of him, the smile off his face, the clothes off his body, the blood out of his inner skin, the water out of the side of his chest, and the breath right up out of his lungs, and life out of every cell of his body. That's the weight of sin on his physical, spiritual, emotional self. And it was a Friday when they came and got him because he had died sooner than the others. Like record speed death. Record speed death for the weight of our sin upon him. Life of every cell of his body squeezed right out. And they took him down off the cross. And there was a tomb that was cut out of a rock. Out of a solid rock and no one had ever been in it before. And they took his body and they put him in the body and they took a very, very large rock and it took many men to push it in place because the stench was about to be magnified and they buried him in there. Seems to me the balance out of Proverbs, the weight of my sins against the penalty that God should carry, the death of his sons, it seems like it seems like God should be without his son for a million years for all of our sin. But God said the penalty is one day. The penalty is one day, but it's not just any day. The penalty is nothing. I am not your God and you are not my people for one day. The day that is the sign. 
the sign that says, I'm your God, you're my people. There's no more sign. You are not my God, and I am not your people. Jesus took in the grave for that whole day. Nothingness between God and mankind. That's a powerful sign, family of God. That's a lot of weight in one day. That's a lot of precious power in one day. And he laid in the grave of nothingness. And he carried the weight of us all. Perfectly. 100%. The best weightlifter that ever lived. Amen. For something happened in the morning. The Bible says, and we preach it at every funeral, because there will be a day that God predicts forward, going forward, that in a twinkling of an eye moment, after a rest that occurs, all that muscle bearing that Jesus did on our behalf, something happened after the day of rest, and muscles began to read rejuvenate in his very body and the nerves began to come alive and the strength of his power began to lift and out of the rubble underneath the weight of all of our sin there was one who was strong enough to bear the whole burden who could not be crushed forever and he began to resurrect up out from under the rubble of all of our lives and the muscles literally, physically regenerate like a weight trainer. And he will never be without God again. Amen. And for those who want to be with him, we also can live forever, never being without our God again. Amen. And resurrection took place that day. There is a sign that remains for the people of God. Amen. Hebrews reminds us, he said, today, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden those hearts of yours. For if Joshua had given them rest way back when they entered into the promised land in that very physical way, way back when, God would not have been speaking about this other thing, this other thing that is for you still today. There remains then, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, there remains now, because of what Jesus did, there remains now a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Amen. This is the first time God pairs rest and Sabbath together in all the Bible. He talks about, in the, the first and two um, Decalogues, he talks about that you should rest on that day, but here in Hebrews, he pairs the word. It's like the rest of all rests. There now remains a rest of all rests for the people of God, a sign of all signs for the people of God, for the sign that you had way back when was for a people who did not fail, but this sign is secured now up underneath Christ, the weight trainer, for one who has failed. You can enter into this rest now going forward, even though you have failed the first time. Amen. That's a more secure rest of all rests for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work. If you've come to church with burdens today, lay it down at his feet. By yourself, you can't handle it. But in the name of Jesus, if you lay it at his feet and you rest in what God has already done on behalf of those very burdens, you think you can't make it through tomorrow? You think you can't live through and endure on the other side? God says, stand in my rest. Stand in, in what I'm going to do for you. Just relax for a minute because I'm going to take care of this. I've got this. Any feeling you've ever had based on those life experience, God has felt already. He is one who knows 
the darkness. He is one that knows what it feels like to not see where God is and where the money is going to come from and where the answer is on the healing. He can see nothingness that stands in your way of seeing resurrection. And this God has got you by the hand and he can see the way to resurrection because he's been there and he's done that and he's taking you with him. Just hold on to the sign. For just as God himself rested from his work, let us therefore make every effort, here's your work in weight training, make every effort to enter that rest. Amen. See the beauty of it, not the burden of it, the beauty of it. And in that rest, Resurrection's coming in the morning. I want you to start feeling the muscles in your body start strengthening up. I want you to feel the, the, the encouragement that begins rising up into your soul that says, I can take another day. I can take another step. And in the name of Jesus, I can praise him all the way. I can't see what tomorrow holds, but I know that he does. Matthew 11, verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and I am lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls here today. And that thing called yoke is us finding rest on that seventh day. It's not your own kind of rest. Know the difference. It's not rest for your own vacationing purposes of things that you find pleasure in. This kind of rest is the sign that says, I'm your God, you're my people. And on this day of rest, you are yoking up with the God who knows how to hold it all in place. You are yoking up with the one who can carry every burden you've ever faced and never have faced. You're yoking up with him who can do all the work and pull you along and guide you in the right direction. That's the kind of rest he's talking about. Not the kind of rest where you just clean up the dirtiness and hide it under a rock and pretend your stable is all clean and pretty. You need a strong ox for the large harvest yet to come. If you want resurrection, you need to harness up with Jesus Christ. If you just want peace on your way to death, you can find any kind of rest you want. Go vacation. Go, go into a zone of nothingness. Check out if you want. Check out. Numb yourself out in a hundred different ways as you deal with the burdens of your life. But God says, I'm a God of resurrection. I'm going to take you and make you stronger. I'm going to change what's inside your soul. And these trials that are coming your way, I'm going to turn into something good. Amen. I'm going to make you stronger on the other side of this resurrection. So strong that you'll never want death again. So yoke up to his sign and find resurrection of the soul. Connect up with the Lord who loves you, who has this, who knows how to bring you through, who knows how to change your heart, who knows how to see a new thing. And watch the things that are in your way. Suddenly when you stand yoked side by side with that other figure in your life story, and by the finger that you thought couldn't lift that one pound weight, suddenly the burdens of your life vanish into nothingness and the big powerful things that stood in your way fall down the cliff like nothingness on that great resurrection day. God says, I'm coming again the first time I came to do away with sin, which I have done. I carried the weight of all the burden, but I'm coming a second day. And the second day that I come, it will bring salvation to the people who have yoked up with my sign. Let's connect up with the Lord God who resurrects us to new life starting today and every day.